masculinity. You might not know it, but I just divided the crowd in two equal parts. The word masculinity has connotations of barbarism and a feral nature for half of you. You imagine a man at the peak of his physical fitness, a man who can possibly withstand months in the wilderness and bear the elements with ease. You imagine a man who can defend himself from any danger, whether it be animals, nature, or other men. However, that other half of you have a notion of masculinity being the pinnacle of gentlemanliness. You imagine a man who holds his morals in high pedestal and always stands by what he says. A man who opens the door for women and is neatly dressed and groomed. Whilst you're not completely mistaken in having these connotations, the notion of masculinity being about either one with no regard for the other, should you have it, is not only mistaken, but blatantly foolish. You see, half of you are thinking about good men. The other half of you are thinking about men who are good at being men. I'll begin by explaining the latter, as the media has been fascinated with this ideal. It's been used to create movie villains, stigmatize masculinity, and criticize celebrities' actions. A man who's good at being a man has the qualities and characteristics that would have made him an efficient hunter, fighter, and protector several hundreds of years ago. These qualities, as writer Jack Donovan would put it in his books, articles, and teachings, are strength, courage, mastery, and honor. The four tactical virtues he mentions in his book, The Way of Men. A man without strength is weak. A man without courage is a coward. A man without mastery is incompetent. And a man without honor is a joke. Men are stronger than women. Biology and four million years of evolution could not care less how offended this statement makes you. Biologically, men are physically stronger than women. In addition, men need to be stronger, not only to attract a potential mate, but to survive. Nowadays, men have forgotten the value of strength because they don't need it in today's society of comfort, ease, safety, and softness. Nowadays, we think of strength building as an activity for meatheads and bros. However, there's much more to this. Strength building not only increases one's health and well-being, but also imparts many metaphorical life lessons, teaches resilience, discipline, and toughness. Courage. Courage is the will to exert said strength, despite the odds presented. Aristotle defined courage as the mean between fear and recklessness. A coward suffers, suffers from a debilitating fear, the things that are mostly harmless. A reckless man takes unnecessary risks that puts him and the ones he care about in danger. A courageous man knows when to take a risk and when it is unnecessary. Mastery is how developed a man's craft is. If we're talking about men who are good at being men, we might talk about crafts such as fighting, hunting, or devising strategies. That's why it's paramount for every man to learn how to fight, to learn how to take a punch to the face, to practice martial arts and self-defense systems, to practice and love violence, to become a human weapon. A strong and courageous man without mastery, is basically an overgrown child who has no idea what he's doing. Honor. Honor is probably the trickiest one to describe. Brett McKay from the theartofmanliness.com states that traditional honor comes in two types, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal honor is a mutual respect and an exclusive honor group. An honor group can be anything from sports team, to a band or a fire brigade. You don't earn this respect or honor for simply existing as a human being. You're not entitled to it. Rather, it's something that must be earned and sought after. It's also paramount that this honor can be lost. For example, think of a rugby team where as long as you show up to trainings, put in an effort, you can stay on the team. Now, 
if a player starts slacking off, not showing up to trainings, and not pushing himself, this is going to bring the team's performance level down. So if the coach doesn't cut him off, his teammates will bully him and shame him into quitting. It's effective. There have to be minimum standards for inclusion, and whoever fails to meet these standards must be cut off. Honor and egalitarianism are mutually exclusive. Vertical honor is given to the member of the honor group who excels in meeting these standards and is outstanding from the group. The honor group is hierarchical and competitive, and this is what drives its members into bettering themselves and excelling. So vertical honor is given to that member who stands out. It brings privileges and esteem from his peers. Now, returning to the analogy of the rugby team, if a player has a particularly good season where he puts in a tremendous amount of effort, makes the tackles, scores the tries, and outperforms his peers, this will bring admiration and respect from others, most importantly, from his peers. Now, that's a man who's good at being a man, a man who has the qualities that would have made him an efficient hunter, fighter, and protector several hundreds of years ago. Now, contrastingly, the definition of a good man is very different to the aforementioned, and it's extremely ambiguous as it changes from religion to religion, from culture to ch culture. It changes if you're Arab, changes if you're European, changes if you're Australian. If you're a Spaniard, your definition of a good man will be different than if you're Japanese. It even, or should I say especially, changes from social class to social class. Being a good man has more to do with your morals and virtues. One could be a basement dwelling troglodyte whose only movements consist of food collection and bowel movements. But if they're respectful, if they're trustworthy, they could still technically be considered a good man. This virtuous nature is often referred to by today's society as being in touch with your feminine side. However, I profoundly disagree with this, as these virtues and morals have been a key component of a rich, balanced masculinity and have been this way for hundreds of years. Now, to reach the pinnacle of modern masculinity, one must have a perfect balance between these two. One could be a tremendously physically fit, a fit athlete or a very skilled hunter or proficient in every single martial arts ever known to man or all three combined like Bruce Wayne. However, if you're not a good man, if you're not a loving husband, if you're not a good father, if you're not tough, if you're not resilient, if you're not trustworthy, you're far from the archetypal ideal of what a man is. Likewise, if you have all the aforementioned virtues and qualities, but you don't have a sense of physicality, a sense of adventure, a desire and strive to have strength, courage, mastery, and honor. You're also far from the archetypal ideal of what a man is. I believe that a balance between these two is paramount for any man who aspires to be a better man.